Okie dokie boys, let's just get right into it. First off, I just want to let the world know that apparently my wife didn't mow the entire lawn because there was a spider's nest in a certain section and she said all lives matter. So now I have some very nicely cut grass with a two by two section of 14 inch grass. But anyway, listen, I'm going to be honest on this one. Coilovers can be, well, just a little bit of a pain in the ass mostly because there's a million things you can adjust on them. They come in a million different trims and sizes and pieces and colors. They're a bit like uh, like buying earrings for your girlfriend. I'm Alex, alex.fi on Instagram, and today we're gonna be talking about some good old classic rookie mistakes people make when adjusting their coilovers. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit up fitmentindustries.com. We've got it all, like coilovers and shirts, wheels, too, and giveaway stuff, like we just did one with Fortunato. So if you want to learn how to get some free coilovers, go take a look at the description link below. First thing when it comes into dialing your suspension, but more importantly, when you're trying to slam it on the pavement is not taking the coilover out of the car to adjust it. It is most commonly happens with adjusting ride height because let's be real. Who wants to take an entire coilover out to lower it and, and have you know proper techniques and processes? Pfft. Have you gone to college? Pfft. Procrastination is the key to success. And now in all honesty, you should actually take them out to use the lower threaded body of the coilover to adjust the height of the car. Using much else isn't usually a good idea. We're just saying. Threaded lower bodies won't come on all coilover options though. So you're gonna wanna make sure you keep that in mind, which kind of bleeds into numero B. The second rookie mistake people always seem to make when they're adjusting their coilovers is using their locking collar on their coilovers as a height adjustment tool. This is where it gets a little bit confusing, which it, it, no, in short. But using the locking collar as a height adjustment is not really what you're supposed to do unless you're a special Sammy with a special coilover and that doesn't come with the lower threaded body, in which case we're gonna get into linear and progressive rate springs here shortly. But this is especially when you're looking to do major adjustments. Now, I know, I get it, procrastination, threaded collar, easy, it's just your knuckles that are gonna bleed. You think to yourself, how can I make my car look the best with the least amount of overall work possible? Don't lie. However, try to stay away from the collar if you have progressive springs and lower threaded bodies. Now, pro tip, a myth about locking collars is how it messes with preload and then how that preload affects your spring rate and how that it overall affects handling. The simple answer is no, preload won't make the spring any more or any less stiff depending on the type of spring that you have. Most of the time you're going to have linear. So it does depend on the type of spring you're talking about, whether that's a linear rate or progressive, but most of the coilovers that you're going to be looking at are linear rate, which means the stiffness won't change no matter how far they're compressed. So while you can use the locking collar to adjust ride height minutely on a linear spring rate, you don't really want to do that if your coilover has other more purposeful adjustments meant specifically for overall height. That's a doozy. Another good rookie mistake when you're going to adjust the coilovers is not actually using the adjustment features that coilovers provide you to, you know, dial them in. Listen, coilovers got some neat shit. They got knobs, turntables, dials, twisty boys. And if you don't use the things that help you dial in your fitment, then you might as well just come to FI and slap Dakota in the face because that's what you're doing when you don't use your coilovers correctly. Breaking it down to all the fun little features of a coilover, you have your things like your adjustable dampers, which control the sensitivity and response to the overall suspension movement through the passing of hydraulic fluid. You can get into the adjustability through compression, rebound, or both, depending on how much dollar bills you have in your wallet, which usually get a little bit. Your adjustable spring load allows you to change how much compression is needed to get the spring to travel depending on the type of coilover you have. Then you actually have your threaded bodies for your overall height. When you're dialing in fitment, it's important to use those tools and not just slam it on its nuts, much as we want to. Mostly because although it'll look proper right off the bat, you may find yourself crying slowly on the highways. You try to figure out why your car oddly rubs at 42 miles an hour or when a leaf makes its way underneath your car and now your car is leaking oil. Dialing in coilovers allow you to make it look absolutely ah, beautiful, but also you can drive it. It's neat. But if you don't use the dialing in tools, it's going to look good, but it's going to perform like absolute ass. I feel like dialing in fitment doesn't always have to be terribly difficult, but the problem is most of us get insanely impatient since it requires constant tweaking. Coilovers are iconically the same. Depending on your use of coilovers, whether that's for the track or for the show, dialing it in always 
changes. Pro tip though, those threads will either become your best friend or your absolute worst enemy. When adjusting your coilovers, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're throwing some anti-seize on those moving parts, especially if the car is driven in inclement weather. It helps a ton when you're playing around with the adjusting your lower body or collars, since the pieces themselves, like metal on metal and cold and warm, over time just doesn't do well. Just historically never does well. My mind always spins when we talk about coilovers because there's just, there's so much. Son, adjusting coilovers is the number one reason that anyone should actually buy them. The same reason multi-piece wheels exist, to dial in your wheels exactly how you want them, because this is America. But when you aren't using the reasons that you spent $2,000 on them, then you're actually not doing anything besides lowering them. And then you're gonna have... Rookie fitment! Once you've gone through and dialed in your fitment, torque to spec your camber plates and control arms, no duggas, and you finally think you have it seated properly, don't forget that you need to account for suspension rest. The good old suspension will rest anywhere from five to 10 millimeters after you swapped to coilovers and a few millimeters more just within dialing in your fitment, depending on what you're doing to it. Because if you put different wheels and tires on, it's gonna change it if you end up adjusting your coilovers again. If you go smack hard with perfect fitment the first time around, you'll end up smashing your wheel slash tire into your fender. Patience, boys and girls, just do it over time. In your opinion, what's the biggest rookie mistake you've seen people make when dialing in their wheel fitment? Drop a comment below so we can laugh or either sympathize with you. I was a heart emoji. If you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, you know where to go. Fitmanindustries.com. I love the comments. Like, just keep saying that. We should just get a t-shirt that has it on there. Let us know what you want us to talk about next, of course, in the comment section below so we can make, keep making awesome videos like this. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries, and we will see you later. Peace.